Did you know that skin is our biggest organ? You won't want to miss my interview coming up next with Dr. Jeannie Downey. She is a renowned dermatologist. Up next. In a typical year, there are 17 million surgeries in the U.S., all resulting in surgical incision wounds. As elective surgeries continue to resume, it is critical that surgical wounds heal properly. November is Healthy Skin Month. I'm all about the skin. And joining me to talk about that and so much more is renowned dermatologist, Dr. Jeannie Downey. Welcome, Dr. Jeannie Downey. Hi there. Nice to be with you. I'm so happy to have you. So much to talk about skin, skin, skin. So much information here. So how long does it actually, first of all, let me back up. How did you get involved in dermatology? How did it all start for you? Okay. My mother is a pediatrician. uh, And so she is the first African-American woman to graduate from University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey back when it was Seton Hall Med Dent in like 1960. And my grandfather, her father, was a dentist back in the roaring days of Harlem. So my grandfather told me that I was good in science when I was four. You know, Wendy, (laughs) when you're four years old, you don't really take science, but I loved my grandfather and I believed him. Um, And so I said, okay, grandpa, I'll be a doctor. And then when I was, you know, from the time I was born, I had bad eczema. And then around 11 years old, colossal acne, like the type that people would look at me like I was crazy and cross the street type of acne. And I kind of, got into dermatology, named my practice image dermatology because I wanted to help other people with their self-image and just kind of charge forward. So I love dermatology and I love medicine. And I come from a family of doctors that really kind of know how to talk to people. So I pride myself on that. Oh my God. So at the age of four, okay. So if I'm looking at you, your skin is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. There's no way sweet. you had no way you had any issues with your skin. Wicked, wicked acne. And people are so mean. And so that's why I'm very sympathetic to all of my patients. And I thank you for the compliment on my skin. I am one of the most vain people you will ever meet in your life. Oh my gosh. So what so so speaking of that, so all these kids out there and adults, adults get acne too. Right. Um, you know, cysts and, and stress comes with all that mm-hmm. and the eating yeah. or, or hormones. What do you right. tell, what do you, what do you recommend for these, these kids um, that get acne? And you know, it's humiliating when you go to school because you don't want your face to look like that. Right. Exactly. So it depends. Uh, some of my patients come in, they get a regimen for me. They follow everything I say to the letter. And those are the patients that do really well, a lot faster. And then other patients kind of, you know, they listen to this, they don't listen to that. They want to blame mm-hmm. me for certain things, you know, and then some of my patients just, they have simple things. Like if they stopped having so much soy in their diet, soy has an estrogenic component. So it can really make people break out nuts, especially peanuts are very, very inflammatory. So, you know, as much as I like nutty peanut butter, I tell them maybe they should back off of that. And then a lot of my patients have dairy products that really break them out significantly. So sometimes it's tweaking the diet, but more than that, I do prescription top topical acne medications. I do prescription oral acne medications. I do a lot of the Accutane derivatives because Accutane is now off the market, but I do a lot of the Accutane derivatives in my practice. And then I do tons, you know, chemical peels. I do laser. I do spot treatments to help with dark spots, you know, really, really all of that. And then I tell them getting to wounds and our topic for today, I tell them not to pick their acne because then they're going to give themselves a wound and that could scar. So I explain to them that they, they shouldn't do that because that's going to actually make my job harder and their healing process worse. And then, you know, Wendy, to transition to you for you for a minute, the whole reason I'm here today is because I'm actually teaming up with Abbott to help people understand that wound healing is a bit more than skin deep. It's Mm -hmm. actually quite a complex process. So early recovery for surgical incisions takes somewhere around four to six weeks, but it varies. It depends on the length and, you know, the width of the surgical excision. It depends on the age of the person, if they have diabetes or if they have underlying autoimmune conditions. And what people need to understand is that they can take very proactive steps to heal. Like I want them to prioritize their nutrition. Okay. Interesting. So wounds, and this wound can be from, from anything. Right. Right. Uh, you know, so from I, a small incision to a big incision to um, a Absolutely. wound that you get if you, you pop a pimple. 
Exactly. So I tell my patients, you know, especially with skin cancer surgeries, general surgeries, and then larger surgeries like orthopedic surgeries, they really need to focus on prioritizing their nutrition. So more calories, more proteins, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals are really needed to generate new tissue. And actually not getting enough of these nutrients can actually slow the healing process. And that's not what we want at all. So that's why I recommend Juven. And Juven's a clinically backed therapeutic drink with nutrients that helps to enhance collagen formation in as little as two weeks. And it's Scott Juven has a lot of key ingredients like arginine, glutamine, vitamins, and minerals. And that helps to support wound healing from the inside out. So that's Oh, wow. I, I was, I wish, can you put that screen back up? I like that, everything that it said on there. Vitamin yeah, yeah, yeah. C, um, zinc, zinc, which is so important. Um, right. Vitamin right. E, vitamin B. B12. Um, uh-huh. B12. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the little packets are right here. So my favorite is a uh, fruit punch. <laughs> Just so everybody knows. <laughs> okay. But there's unflavored, there's orange, there's fruit punch. And it's basically twice a day for at least two weeks. And many doctors are going to recommend a bit longer, like four weeks. It depends on your overall healing process. So other kind of tips that I tell my patients, I tell them to rest up because so many of my patients are athletic. They want to work out. Then they're going to bust apart their stitches or even picking up heavy babies, a heavy dog or a heavy grocery bag, um, you know, are, are bad things, unfortunately, while they're trying to rest up from a surgical incision. So I tell them, focus on their health and rest up. The baby can be picked up by your significant other and the dog does not need to be picked up right now, which they don't listen on the dog thing. And then I tell them not to smoke. I want them to ice regularly. Icing is really, really important because that's going to actually decrease the swelling and decrease some of the inflammation. And then I tell them to clean, disinfect and protect the wound, you know, wrap it up, bandage it to keep it, you know, away from bacteria and away from sunlight. Very Okay. So is Juven only during the time when you have an incision or can you take it? Because it seems like it's so good for everyday life. So there's so, it's so funny. Some of my patients are, um, shall we say, um, um, not coordinated. So they're not athletes like I am. And so one of my patients is forever cutting her leg. Uh, She (laughs) came in the other day with a, um, I forget what she was doing. Oh, she was taking her her mask off and she ripped her earring out and she came in with a ripped earlobe. And so I put her on the Juven so that her earlobe would heal faster. So it can be used for small things like an earlobe repair. Um, Another patient of mine came in for Botox and um, I noticed a skin cancer on the top of her nose and another one halfway down her nose. And I was like, okay, um, the Botox is great, but we have to do this. And she's like, no way. And she's the nicest woman, but you know, that tanning bed history when you're very fair, and even if you're not fair is going to catch up with you. So I explained to her and I tell all of my patients the same thing. I'm going to ask everybody that's listening to us to ask their doctor if Juven is right for them. And if it's right for them, they should really, you know, get a wound healing plan. That's what I do with my patients because we want to speed this along. We want them to heal their best. And then they should go to juven.com for more information and note that it's sold um, on Amazon and it's available at CVS and Walgreens. And back to that patient with the two surgical um, incisions, right now she's doing great. So we're up to the next stage where we're, we're lasering her, we're making sure that she does all the proper wound healing stuff because we want to get rid of these. She's young and she's beautiful. And I think the only thing that she wants to be standing out on her face right now is the gorgeous blue eyes that she has and nothing more. So we're focusing on getting her back to her goal of her blue eyes being, you know, the story of her face rather than these two marks being the story of her face. Oh my God. Skin, skin cancer. It's so scary because, you know, uh, born, I was born and raised in Florida in Miami. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, I did the baby oil thing all over my body. Oh Oh, yes, I did. I'm an ex-lifeguard. I'm an ex-lifeguard, Wendy. I totally understand. I'm an ex-lifeguard. I'm an ex-swim instructor and I'm an ex-swim champ. So I was- You're everything. So I was out in the sun. And my mother told me to wear the old stuff from like the early 80s was called pre-sun. And it was really, really opaque and thick and whitish. And, you know, my brown skin, it didn't rub in. And so I was a teenager and I knew everything. And I was like, no, mom, I'm not wearing this, mom. 
And then I started to get dark, dark patches on my face around the time I was 21 years old. And I went to my dermatologist and I said, hey, what's this? And they said, oh my God, that's melasma. You're very young to get that. If you don't wear sunblock every day, your skin's going to look awful. And he had this thick Brooklyn accent when he said awful by the time you're 40. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to wear sunblock every day. Thank you very much, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> if you just tuned in, I'm talking to Dr. Jeannie Downey. She's a renowned dermatologist. We're talking about skin incision. We're talking about surgical incisions and we're talking everything skin. Well, I have to say, you know, it catches up with you. All that bad stuff. Right. I wish I would have used protection long ago. I um, know, but I love Miami and I love the Miami sun. So and we, we all need say vitamin D, right? Yeah, we do. And so I tell my patients, especially my patients um, that tan in tanning beds, the tanning bed is like 12 to 15 times the ultraviolet radiation. So I'd rather them eat a balanced diet with a lot of salmon and vitamin D in it. And you can take vitamin D in supplements and still, you know, be healthy. So you don't have to get your vitamin D from the sun. So wait, so people still do tanning beds? Yeah, people still do tanning beds. I thought it's those a, days were over. Roughly, no, it's like, uh, I think for 2020, it's about a $1 billion, $1.2 billion a year industry here in the United States. So it's a big, big deal. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just mm-hmm. use the organic spray stuff. But anyway, okay. So did, I don't I like. think people realize that skin is our largest organ. It is. It's the largest organ of the body and people don't pay enough attention to it. So I tell my patients, it's a series of things. You have to exercise. I recommend exercising uh, after your wound is healed. That is four days a week, 25 minutes of cardio and 25 minutes of weights. I tell my patients they need to sleep. Um, So many people don't sleep. So I tell them a minimum of seven hours of trying to make sure they get, you know, a good night's sleep. And then their nutrition is really, really important. A lot of processed foods are not good for them. So they need to eat a diet that's got, you know, protein, that's got grains, that's got, um, you know, proper non-processed foods in it, as well as vegetables and a lot of brightly colored fruits. I tell them to eat the rainbow in terms of fruits and vegetables. And then I go back to the basics with them. They need to drink water. People drink so much coffee to get themselves revved up and they don't drink enough water. So I'm a big water girl. And so I tell them every one cup of coffee you drink equals two more cups of water that you need to rehydrate yourself. And my patients look at me like I'm like the bad news bearer, but I say it in a really sweet way so that it's much more effective. Well, um, you know, looking at you, I just going to do everything that you say. So I look, my skin looks like you and I look like you. Um, so Thank routine you. is so important. Rest is so important. Routine for your skin, waking mm-hmm. up every day, washing your face twice right. a day, ex- exfoliating. Right. Do you believe in exfoliating? Is that like a... I do. I do believe in exfoliating. I think that it's important that people use an exfoliator that's tailored for their skin type. So if their skin is more dry, then they should use something tailored for more sensitive skin. And if their skin is more oily, they can use something that's a little bit rougher. I like the glycolic acids. So I like those because they're alpha hydroxy acids. So they help improve the texture of the skin, the tone of the skin. They help with acne breakouts and fine lines. And in terms of wound healing, glycolic acids need to be totally out of the picture, But in terms of skin exfoliation, they can be in the picture. And then I tell everybody, every single day with the sunscreen, rain or shine, January through December, regardless of the ethnicity of the person. And then quite frankly, once you put the sunblock on, I recommend a cream sunblock on the face, on the neck and the backs of the hands first thing in the morning. And then I tell my patients to use a powder puff throughout the day for the women. And the men, well, men don't wear makeup, so they can take the cream sunblock with them. Because even if you're on Zoom calls and you're on the computer all day, we as human beings react to indoor lighting and outdoor lighting and the blue light from our phone and the blue light from the computer. So all those patients that come in to see me that are like, oh, Dr. Downey, um, my skin doesn't look right. My wound isn't healing. And they have something that's like, you know, stitched and not covered. I'm like, no, 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 no. Put some sunblock on that. Put proper wound care on that and keep that away from the sun and keep reapplying the sunblock. And then I talk to them about Juven and they're like, okay, well, I don't want the unflavored. What flavors? My patients are so picky and so funny, but this is something that works and it works well. So I'm excited about it. And just so you know, there's over 40 clinical trials, Wendy, and the largest clinical trial that Juven held had about 270 people in it. So this is not just theory. This is actually, you know, clinically proven. And I do a lot of clinical trials in my private practice. So that's very important to me. The science behind the products is actually quite important to me. 
No, oh, that's very important too. Okay, the million dollar question, Dr. Jeannie Downey. Million dollar question. You go to a, okay, so some people can't afford the mm-hmm. the um, prescriptions, or some people can't afford to go to a dermatologist. You're walking into a drugstore. There is mm-hmm. a million options. What do you do? What do you look for? Right? I mean, you can get so overwhelmed. And now, with it, right. it, you know, off the subject of that, you even walk in. There's a million different sanitizers. You don't even know what to do. It's right. overwhelming for people. It is. It is. And so when people, you know, for people that are listening to us talking right now and that want to do more for, you know, say they know they have 